Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Josh, um, we always like to ask our guests about the mentors that they've had in their life. Uh, none of us get to where we're at on our own. So who are some of the people that helped you along the way? Uh, I, I've got a guess of maybe one or two names that you might share with us, but uh, who are some of your mentors? Well, I mean, of course, we talked about my dad uh, early on. And, uh, you know, he, he's he been, been one of my big mentors, uh, you know, at a young age. Um, you know, another uh, great mentor that I, I had was uh, Glenn Manley. And he used to be the athletic director at Bay High. Um, you know, kind of when I first started, uh, you know, technically he was my football. He was my, my kicking coach and he was a special teams coordinator um, when I went to high school at Bay High. But when I came back and started coaching, he had actually become the athletic director. Um, and, you know, help him kind of guiding me. And when I first got the job, kind of helping until he actually ended up retiring. Um, and so the funny thing about that though, is, you know, they actually pulled him out of retirement, uh, last year because they couldn't find anybody at Bay High. So they pulled him out of retirement and he'd been out for five years and kind of didn't know how much things had changed over the five years. So, he mentored me kind of at the beginning of my athletic director career. And then I'm now mentoring him on things that have changed over the course of the years. I think I lost you. I think you're muted. Yeah, no, no, you're good. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. No, um, no. Yeah. So, you know, over the course of the years, things have changed. So he calls me from time to time about, uh, different things. And so I kind of help him out. And, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of the things that he kind of, uh, guided me, got helped guide me in were the organization being organized, you know, having calendars for your administration and stuff like that. So the principal and the assistant principals know where they're going and you, you know, they don't have to ask questions. It's simple. It's it's streamlined, um, less thinking that they have to do. Uh, you know, those are, those are things that, uh, you know, kind of stand out to me. Um, uh, and, you know, he's always, you know, and today, at, anytime I go back to Panama City, lunch is all, he always says lunch is always on him. So, and, you know, we, we bounce ideas off each other. And um, he's from, I always say, you're from the old, old school. And, you know, I, I like the old, old school ways, but I have to adapt the old school ways to the new ways. Um, to, to keep things going. Um, another, uh, another mentor that I had, uh, what Tommy Santamont, uh, who was just elected to the FIAAA. He, he was the, uh, uh, the Bay County director of athletics. Um, and he was already out, uh, and retired when I got the job at Mosley. Um, but you look at it and, he was up. I would be like, "Hey, you know what? How? What can? You, what can you help me out with?" And he was like, "FIAAA." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" And he said, "FIAAA. That's where you got to go. Those are things you got to do." So that's when I started googling what FIAAA was. Found out about the LTI classes and and the conference and everything. And then I get down there and I'm like, "He's super involved in FIAAA. He's running the Mandy Stole auction. He's he's been on the board of directors. He's you know." He's now in the Hall of Fame, and I didn't even know any of that. And you know, and 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 I've known the guy probably since I was ten years old, <laughs> but you know, I didn't know. And so, you know, though, and him getting me connected with those types of things, and it was it was it was really cool when um, he's on. A, he does a radio show now in town, sports radio show. It's like three retired coaches and him as the county AD. And they talk local sports. They talk college sports. And um, one day I had just come back from the conference and they had made the phone call that he had gotten in the Hall of Fame. And he was talking about it on air. And I was like, I got to call him. And he was he got mad at me because I knew, but I wasn't allowed to tell him until they made the phone call. And I wanted to, and I wanted to tell him, but I knew I couldn't until they did. And he was like, you should have told me I was getting in. And I was like, well, you know, so, you know, those, the, uh, you know, another big one, I, like it was Roger Mayo, Roger, Roger, uh, you know, he was in a different county and 
he would always pick up the phone, no matter if it was something small, no matter how busy he was, he'd always pick up the phone or return an email. Um, every time he introduced me to a bunch of people down in FI AAA, because, you know, and, and honestly, if you go down there for the first time to a conference, it can be overwhelming. There's a, you know, not, you know, having that first time attendees where, you know, you go in there and you, there's people in there that you can meet, but if, if it can be overwhelming for what you have to do, especially if you don't know, and then having people to be able to make those connections and say, Hey, this is so-and-so from Apopka. This is so-and-so from Clay County. This is so-and-so from Bavard County. And then you just start talking and, you know, and it makes, and it makes those connections a whole lot easier to make. And then, you know, now you've started to integrate yourself into, uh, into the FI AAA. And now those connections just start expanding. And so now you're not even, you're not even working, you see, like at the conference, like, you know, me and Mike Ito, we sat next to each other at a board meeting, but he was two hours down the road. I could always pick up the phone and call Mike. I did it like two weeks ago. I had to ask Mike a question. He picked up the phone. We, you know, and we talked, we ended up talking for 45 minutes. I mean, it was only a five second question, but we ended up talking for 45 minutes. And then, you know, those are things that, um, it's always great when, you know, and I, and I credit Roger with trying with getting me in to that aspect and, and kind of like almost pushing me and saying, just go talk to these people. And that's what you need to do is just to go talk. And so, you know, those are three of the, you know, my, my, what I would say athletic director kind of mentors and, and people that, that helped me get along, you know, another one, and still today, I still sit down and talk with him all the time. Is uh, is Jeff Duke, um, and he helped me coaching wise. He still helps me AD wise, you know. When he, and and he actually coaches here at Edgewater. You know, his his son is the head football coach here at Edgewater, and and Jeff will he he helps. Uh, uh, we always call him the he's the coach's coach as well. Um, but you know, it's always, and he always comes in every day and he'll say, how you doing today? He always just checks in on me and you know, that goes a long way, but you know, anytime there's things going on, cause he used to be, he was the County AD in Leon County and he moved on from there. So he, he knows, he knows how the things go. So, um, it's always good when you have those people that you can talk to that have been in the line of fire, they know what you're talking about and you know maybe might have a piece of advice for you to get through it. Yeah. Again, you really hit it on the head, you know, building your network, you know, having those go-to people and, and adding to it. And I always love to hear when mentors are still a part of your life. It's not just this name from the past, you know, at the beginning of your career, they're still very much a part of your, yeah. of your network. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. For our listeners, uh, we're visiting today with Josh Vandergriff. He's a certified athletic administrator. And he's the athletic director at Edgewater High School, which is in Orlando. We're going to take another break, but we're going to come back with some more. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Snap Mobile for their support of the podcast. Go to snapraise.com. Check out their entire suite of platforms. So you've got Snap Store, Snap Manage, Snap Connect, and of course you have Snap Raise, their fundraising platform. We used it at our school with great success. Our teachers, our coaches, our parents loved it, and it works. They've helped schools just like yours raise over $700 million. They even have a program where you can get your funding before you actually start your fundraiser. I don't think anybody else offers that. Go to snapraise.com. Get started today. That's snapraise.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Josh, we have a lot of uh, young ADs, new ADs to the profession, and I think it's important that they hear the journey that um, we all take, particularly with our national organization and the LTI courses. We've already mentioned you're a CAA. That doesn't happen by accident. So, Talk a little bit about that journey, that process, and maybe let us know where you're at uh, as you continue that uh, NIAAA journey. Yeah, sure. So, you know, the first thing I would say to any young AD is get involved, 
go to the state conference, start taking LTI classes, start with the first one, you know, there, and, you know, and it, and it's a lot of times it's not about the actual class. It's about the class that you're taking it with and the instructors in the class. They're going to give you great information, but you're also going to, you're going to continue the networking process that you can, you can pick up and, you know, make even better every single day. Um, you know, I, when I first started, you know, I think it, when I started working towards my CAA, you know, I, I would take the classes and I'd look at them and, you know, I didn't know all about the, the CAA, the CMA. I was just at first taking the classes to learn the job and understand the job. Um, and then once I went to my first national uh, conference, I think it was in Nashville at the time. And I went and started looking at other things and I was like, okay, well now with the national association that, you know, you have the CAA, you have the CMA, uh, you have different things that you can do with these classes that you take. So I started looking at it and I, and I started looking at how many classes that I've already taken. And I was like, okay, so I was doing the points and I was like, man, I just don't have enough points. I don't, I don't get what I'm doing. So I think at a meeting, I said, Jake, I don't understand why I don't have enough points. And he was, you were like, no, you have to put every single thing. I was like, oh, so once we did that, I was like, oh, okay, I have enough points now. So, so then I was like, okay, at the next conference, I'm, I'm taking the, the CAA exam. And, you know, I had all the classes that I had to have for that exam. Um, and then, you know, I had all the points and all the sheets that you have to have. And so I signed up for the exam and, and took it, went to the study session that they had, and I took the exam, and I was like, I don't even think I passed it. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I, I was like, I walked out of that room and I felt defeated, and I was like, man, I don't know what, I just feel, but come to find out, I passed it, and I did a very good job on it, and it was all the information that I retained and everything like that, and I was just, but when I left the room, so I was like, if you. So for those of you coming up, if you're listening to this and you take the CAA exam and you leave feeling defeated, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm telling you, it, it, it'll be okay. So, you know, I got my CAA and here in Orange County, that's a big thing. We actually get a pay bump as an athletic director. Not a whole lot of, not a whole lot of uh, schools in Orange County, or I mean, outside of Orange County do that. So, you know, having that CAA kind of helps, you know, you know, put, makes that 25 cents an hour go to 35 cents an hour. So, um, but, you know, the other thing was Roger called me one day and said, hey, I'm moving to the executive board. There's going to be a district one opening uh, and for a, a board member. I was like, I don't even know what that means, Roger. He was like, no, you get to sit on the board. You get to see how the inner workings of the FIAAA happen and i was like okay i said so i do i just say yes <laughs> and and get the job or he's like well no it's an elected position but i'm leaving in the middle of my term so the president just appoints you and so i was like okay i said well i would be willing to talk to the president and, and uh, everything like that so i did and scott Dravsnik, and you know he was at father lopez at the time called me we had a great conversation he added me on as district one now i I'm, I work with Scott in Orange County, you know, and he's at Horizon. So, you know, it's one of those things where you do everything and now you, you're, you're working with the same people that you were, you were, uh, you were communicating with. Um, so, I, you know, I served on that board, uh, I think from about 2016 to 2020. Uh, when I decided to come down here, I had to give up my position on the board since it's not district one anymore. Um, so, so, but yeah, I served on that for four years. I was on the Mandy Stoll committee um, and uh, I was on the communications committee. And, and once again, it's where you're, I just, you know, you meet people and you learn and, you know, you, you get the idea. And, you know, that's one time I talked to uh, uh, John Stramola and, you know, he was at, uh, I think it's Ridgeview or Riverview at the time before he became Clay County's AD. Um, you know, we, we always had great conversations. So we see each other at conferences now. We're good friends. I can always text him if we need anything or if I have a question, you know. And if, you know, if I ever wanted to try to move into that county AD role, 
you know, now I have a great source in John, or I can call Dan Talbot. You know, those those uh, people have that great source if I ever wanted to, you know, move into that type of role and just instead of being a high school, being, being a county AD. But, you know, the FIAAA is the one that I always give credit to as it kind of puts you on a path to doing the job the right way. And with the retention rate that athletic directors have and being able to have the, 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 I'd almost like it's the netting in the circus where you have the guys jumping through the hoops and everything. And if they miss, they land in the net. I think the FIAAA in that is that netting that you have that helps you be able to do your job the right way and be able to help your coaches and your kids um, be successful. So you know, those are things that I've always give, given credit to the FIAAA of helping me become a better athletic director all, all the way around. You know, it uh, you know, was not ne- this weekend, but next weekend when we have the we have the conference, I, I'm going to take a, another another class. I uh, can't remember what it is, but I know it's a 700 class. Um, I know Scott drives and he keeps getting wanting me to take the teaching class. So. So he can he can get me. But, you know, going to the state conference and then going to the national conference, the national conference is a whole nother animal. It's awesome, but it's a whole nother animal. Um, now I know and it's coming to is it Orlando or is it Tampa this year? I think it's Orlando, right? Orlando this year and then Tampa, I think, two years after that. Yeah. So, yeah, those, you know, uh, especially, you know, if you're in the if you're an athletic director in the state of Florida, get to the national. And I mean, you can take so many LTI classes there. It's unbelievable. But I mean, just hearing the the speakers and, and meeting the people and talking to the people, it, it'll blow your mind. Um, and it's so much that, you know, I just I honestly my first national just turned into a sponge and was just like soaking it all in and, you know, and getting it and getting as much as I could to take back. And, you know, and I and nowadays, you know, I always say. My when I if I go to let's say the FACA athletic director clinic, or if I go to the FIAAA athletic director, you know, all of the clinics that they have, my goal is to come away with one thing. If I can come away with one thing from that from that conference, it was worth it. Sometimes you'll come away with multiple things, but always look for that one thing that you can always maybe either implement or what it it can help you in any way. I mean, that's what the FI AAA is there for and the NI AAA. So, you know, those are the things that I always look at. Yeah. Uh, again, I, I remember that conversation that we had, and it's not uh, uncommon. Uh, so for listeners, if you're thinking about the CAA, the form that you fill out, there are a number of different sections and you should just think, all right, what is this talking about? You know, if you host a coaches meeting, uh, weekly, monthly, every year, you know, that you get points for that. You know, if you do an awards program, if you do any kind of newsletter, you know, that's publishing, uh, you know, there's points there, uh, legitimate points that allow you to meet the criterion uh, once you take the courses uh, to sit for that CAA exam. And I don't know if this is, is good or bad. I think the pass rate, the success rate for the exam is something like 94%. Uh, so, you know, it's exhaustive, but it's also, as as we say, and I used to administer that test for a number of years when I was on certification, we'd say it's common sense. You know, just yeah. like, what's the best answer? Don't, uh, don't talk yourself out of a good answer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, great memories there. Um, yeah. For our listeners, uh, our guest is Josh Vandergrip. He's the athletic director at Edgewater High School in Orlando. We're going to take another break. I know that's shocking to our regular listeners, but uh, we'll be back. This is the Educational AD Podcast. Here we go. We want to thank Gipper for their support of the podcast. Go to gipper.com. See how athletic directors are creating world-class marketing content for their school social media channel. These days, it's all about marketing your teams, your student athletes, your coaches, even yourself. And Gipper's going to help you do that. Go to Gipper.com, start creating custom content for your school's social media channel. 
Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Josh, one of the things we try to do with the podcast is this idea of sharing best practices. So I'm going to put you on the spot. What are some things that you do at Edgewater that you're particularly proud of? These might have been initiatives that you brought to the school, or maybe it's something they've been doing for 50 years. But uh, what are some things that uh, you can share with our listeners that you would call best practices? So some of my best practices that I use, you know, I've developed, you know, and then they're not even close to perfect, but we fine tune them almost every year. But the biggest thing is, is, is organization. And I create myself checklists. And so, you know, talking with other ADs around the state, you know, I, I was trying to figure out what I could best do for a Friday night home football game and be prepared and not forget anything and make sure everything's set up and not have to rush on a Friday all day long to try and get everything done. So, you know, I created a, a checklist for myself that starts on Tuesday and goes all the way through Friday afternoon. And, um, I, you know, uh, during football season, I go through that day and I check it off. Okay, this is what I got done. You know, no matter if it's having the PA script done, having, you know, sending an email to the opposing AD head football coach Vanderhecker to making sure that, you know, they know the parking situation, the locker room situation and all of that. You know, the one thing that I've always kind of, you know, it, it kind of irks me a little bit is when either my football team shows up, which I always kind of to an away game and nobody knows anything. Like they pull up to the stadium and it's four o'clock, the stadium's locked. There's, you know, nobody's, nobody's around and you got five coaches trying to find somebody to unlock something um, so that they can get things done. So, you know, making sure that, you know, that doesn't happen, you know, those, those are all kind of organizational things that I kind of go off of the checklist to do, you know, one of the biggest things I have is that I created is, is, you know, it's a Google sheet. Um, and it's a schedule maker. It's a live document. And that's what we call it. We call it the schedule maker. And that's where all the coaches go on. They put their schedules and they have certain areas where they write. Then they see that, you know, this is, you know, we have all our games here. This it says school leave. Well, if you have to leave early, you're going to tell me when you want to leave. So all this goes in before the season starts. And then I go through the transportation. I'm telling them if I can get you a school bus by that time, or we got to do a charter bus, or you got to do vans. Or, you know, is it right across the street or parents walk, driving? You know, those are those are in that column. So we always look at different things, but it's all on one sheet for one team. So the principal can always just pull it up. She has access to it. Um, but and, you know, I put my go my 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 tickets on there. I put my officials on there. I put my contracts on there. So everything's in one area. So the coaches, myself, my athletic trainer. Um, and you see my sign behind me, don't forget about me today. She made that for me because sometimes I do forget of calling her and saying, hey, the game got canceled today because of rain. So, you know, those are things, those are little things right there that, you know, people don't think of. But, you know, it's, it, it's keeping yourself organized and in, 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 in doing and in doing those things. You know, I have a big calendar in my office, which a lot of ADs do. I mean, everything's on there for two months. So sometimes. I'll, I'll have people come in and they're looking, you know, the SGA sponsor. Uh, they have access to our schedule maker. They have access to our gym calendars because they have to be, there's all kinds of things going on at a high school that people, you know, some people don't know about, you know, they like tonight we have FCA black light dodgeball in the gym. <laughs> well, we had to find a date to put that in there. So, um, you know, most people are like, what? That's yeah. I said I, you know, had boys volleyball practice. Then I had to, they have to get set up for that. So you know, sometimes you you have to have those things in place. And the other one, the other Google sheet that I make is for our administrators. Um, what I do there is I create the administration, uh, their their supervisor schedule um, with my assistant ads and my deans and assistant principals. What and what we look at is. I make it before the spring, before the fall season, before the winter season, before the spring season. So if there's a date on there that doesn't work for them, they can always just trade with another administrator. But they see it up front. They have access to it every single week. 
Um, and they can always pull it and change it if they needed to, as long as somebody comes in and fills their spot. But they know where they have to be, how many games they have to cover, uh, and what time they have to be there. So, And then it also tells them which athletic trainer is on duty with them that night in case something bad happens. So, you know, that, that, that all of that together, you know, to me is, is the organization that you have. Now, uh, you, to be an athletic director, you have to have that organization because if not, you're going to think fast. And, I, and, I, and I've learned that the hard way in some things, you know, not, not hitting deadlines during early on in my career, FHSA deadlines, having your rosters in on time, you know, different things that you have to do. But keeping yourself organized, having your check checklists and to-do lists, you know, creating some spreadsheets that will help you be able to put things in perspective. Um, you know, I always say principals always like to see everything on the screen. If they can see it, they know what it looks like. You know, those are things that they, they like, um, you know, and then if somebody doesn't show up, that print, you and the principal can pull it and be like, so-and-so was supposed to be there. Okay. Now the principal is going to go see so-and-so and wonder why they weren't there. Um, so though, you know, having those in, in, in being, a, and like I said, everything's not perfect. You know, every year I'm looking to fine tune it, change it, add it, share it with somebody. Um, another organizational thing that we do is with Google forms is I create a Google form that my coaches at the beginning of the year have to fill out. And in that same form, they have to put their FHSA cards, um, that they get, you know, their, 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 NFHS learns uh, certificates, their CPR card, um, all of that goes in this form, but it also, it allows me to get their shirt size. It allows me to get their home address, you know, for when I want to send them a Christmas card or a thank you card, uh, you know, at Christmas. So I have their home address, you know, I have all their cell phone numbers. Um, and then that way everything is condensed into one and I need to be able to get a hold of somebody or be able to do things. But also, you know, if the county asks for so-and-so's cards, uh, certificates and CPR card, I know where they are and they're all stored in a folder. So having all that stuff every single year, having it organized, being able to understand the organization um, and not have the chaos all around it is, is one of my biggest. Um, my other one is is coaches and parents meetings coaches and parents meetings are the biggest things that everybody's like okay yeah i have a coaches meeting at the beginning of the year i said okay well how many of your winter coaches remember what you said in, in the summer coaches meeting that's where that's where it comes in so i do have a i have a beginning of the year coaches meeting where i bring in the bookkeepers and i bring in you know security i bring in the system principals you know, we have lunch and that's what that's getting back together, getting the school year back together. But in the real nitty gritty, I actually have a fall coaches meeting. And in that fall coaches meeting is just the fall head coaches. And that's getting and I give them all the information they need to know before the season starts. So when I'm giving them all of that information, it's just for them. So I don't like lose the spring coaches and the winter coaches because none of that information goes to them. So when before winter season starts, before the first team even does tryouts or whatever, you know, I have a winter coaches meeting. And the same thing in the spring, I have a spring coaches meeting. So the stuff, some of the stuff I might cover in the overall coaches meeting is going to get covered twice, three times. But if if something goes wrong and I go to that coach and I said, well, you got it here. And then I told you again here, you still don't understand it. So then we have a different problem. And then, you know, at the end of the season, I also have a end of the year coaches. And that's more of fellowship, get together. Let's, you know, summer stuff, but, you know, great year. Um, but the, breaking it down and having those coaches meetings yeah, I mean, and they're not long. I'm, I mean, right after school, 45 minutes, go home. I mean, if you, if you have everything written down, make a PowerPoint, whatever, it's all here for you to do. You're not going to be able to, you know, you know you're not going to run long. It's going to be boom, 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 
questions, answers, trainer comes in, she ha does her spiel for tryouts and stuff like that. But that holds your, the attention of the coaches. And I, and I tell other ADs all the time, Gee, I treat the coaches like I do the kids in class. Keep, keep them focused on you because sometimes they're going to score along you too. And you're going to have to be able to keep them focused. You know, that the parent meeting aspect, I go to every first parent meeting. I have my little spiel that I go through um, talking about, you know, parent involvement, fundraising for the teams, chain of command when it comes to, you know, you just get mad at the coach and don't just decide to call the principal. There's a chain of command that we go through, you know, and then I hang around for them to, to answer any questions or just meet the parents because talking to the parents eliminates a lot. I mean, Back in the day, I, they used to say, oh, you don't talk to the parents. Don't talk to the parents at all. But, you know, you just talk to the parents. Having a casual conversation, then I see them at games. I, I'm standing by the gate. You know, they say hi. I say hi. We have com casual conversations. They know who I am. They're not just that that guy over there is the athletic director, but we don't know who anything about it. We just know he's here all the time. So, you know, ma making those connections – you know, with the parents, with the kids, um, that's the that's the biggest. And that, that kind of rolls into the building the relationships. And that's always evolving, no matter if you're building relationships with the administration, no, excuse me, your coaches, the parents or even the students. I mean, to this day, I still love and the reason I do lunchroom duty. It's not because I like doing lunchroom duty, but it's because I get to hang out with the kids. I get to walk around, see all of the athletes, talk to them, say, hey, man, tough one last night. I heard, uh, you know, y'all were on the road and you dropped one to East River. Like, yeah, coach, it was a tough one, you know. But, you know, that conversation right there goes a long way of, you know, than them, me just walking past them and like, oh, that guy doesn't care. I mean, yeah, he's in charge, but he doesn't care about us. So, I mean, building those relationships to help those kids to be able to, like, you know, earlier today, you know, right after school, we had a signing. I mean, we signed seven to play at the next level. And, you know, having those relationships with those kids, uh, understanding I was proud of every one of them. They're great kids, great parents. And, you know, they're moving on to the next level. So, you know, and I and I don't know if I got it from you, but I got it from somebody on the FIAAA. I had to say this. In every coach's meeting, I, I have a big sign at the end. And it says either you coach it or you allow it. And I think I got it from you, but it, it goes a long way. And those coaches understand that and they see it. And, um, and it's in every meeting, either you coach it or you allow it. And that's going to be the, the, and that's what I, and you know, ever since I've got it from when I was at Mosley, I brought it to Edgewater and, you know, the bet, some of the best things we steal from other ADs. <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm never trying to reinvent the wheel. I mean, well, that's not going to be me. So I'm going to, I'm going to steal from other ADs. And if it works for you, it'll probably work for me. And sometimes it might not, but this one has worked for a long time and it, and it, and it holds true. That's the thing. Well, we can stop the podcast right now because you just, uh, you know, used my my favorite saying. You you've actually, I think, improved on it, uh, and I didn't invent it. Uh, I heard it years ago. I wish I knew where I got this, but uh, it's followed me at every school I've ever been at. Our coaches know it. Our parents knew it. Uh, I would say everything we see is either coached or allowed. You know, you've just mm -hmm. you know, got it down to its essence. Uh, you <laughs> coach it or allow it. Great stuff. Uh, and uh, again, those best practices you talked about, um, the the scheduling, the organization, you know, the, the mundane minutia of being an AD, you've got to have that or yeah. it's chaos and you won't be an athletic director for long. But then you also hit very importantly, on the relationship aspect with kids, with coaches, got to treat them like kids. Uh, and also with the parents, uh, you know, hopefully one of those LTI courses you're signed up for is our uh, partnering with parents course, uh, which I was part of the authorship team, uh, you know, little self-promotion there. Uh, so again, great, great stuff. Uh, I don't want us to get by without doing this. If one of our listeners wanted to reach out 
and pick your brain a little bit more. And listeners, I think you got a great resource here. What's the best way that they can get in touch with Josh Vandergriff? So two ways. The, the the easiest probably way is for to you to email me at uh, Joshua, J-O-S-H-U-A dot Vandergriff, and that's V-A-N-D-E-R-G-R-I-F-T at O-C-P-S dot net. Or you can just call myself and or text me, and uh, that's 850-258-3061. And listeners, if you're going to text, you know, tell him what it's all about. Don't just say, hey, Josh, call me. Uh, you know, let him know what's going on. Uh, Josh, this has been so cool uh, reconnecting uh, for me and also to uh, give you a chance to share on the podcast. But we're not done yet. Uh, we always wrap up with the athletic director's toolbox. Now, that last segment, you know, you filled uh, an entire dump truck with tools and they were all fantastic. Um but when we come back, uh, I'm going to challenge you to send out a brand new athletic director, but I'm only going to let you put three things in their toolbox. So uh, let's hear from our final two sponsors, Hometown Ticketing and Athletic Surveys. And when we come back, we're going to find out what Josh Vandergriff is going to put into his athletic director toolbox. Please stay with us. We want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing for their support of the podcast. Go to hometownticketing.com. They're the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. They're going to show you how to set up and sell tickets, not just for athletic events, but things like school plays, concerts, school dances, even graduation. And the best part, every step of the way, you're going to have a dedicated client success manager that provides you hands-on support. That's every step of the way. Go to hometownticketing.com and get started. Simple and easy online ticketing. We also want to say thank you to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. They sponsor the AD Toolbox segment. Athletic directors usually only get feedback from the complainers, that uh, squeaky wheel parent or maybe a frustrated student athlete. Athletic Surveys allows you to hear from them and the 98% of the parents and student athletes that love and support your program. And that's tremendously valuable data, especially when you're meeting with that squeaky wheel parent or with your principal or with your school board. Go to athleticsurveys.com. They're going to create a custom survey for your school that allows you to take the pulse of your parents and your student athletes. That's athleticsurveys.com. Check them out today. Well, it's that time of the podcast. We've been visiting today with Josh Vandergriff. He's a certified athletic administrator. He's on the FIAAA board, and he's the director of athletics at Edgewater High School. He knows his way around the world of athletics. But right now, I'm going to challenge him to send out a brand new AD on the very first job, but I'm only going to let him put three things in that toolbox. Josh, what's going to go into your athletic director toolbox? All right. So the first one is is going to be the organizational aspect of you're going to have to have you know if you're a technology person then using spreadsheets and forms and different things like that i would recommend you know your cell phone your google calendar everything that on that side if you're not a technology person i like sometimes me i have a planner i carry it in my backpack now i also do the technology things as well but having a planner um, or something like that, though, those are, those are the things that, you know, to help keep you organized, never be ashamed of to-do lists. Uh, you know, always get to those things on your to-do list. You put them on. Sometimes that to-do list is just going to keep growing and growing and growing, but, you know, always, always try to get to, uh, mark them off. So that's, that's number one, it, it, you know, just being organized because that's going to help you go a long way. Uh, my other one, my other two, the first one's going to be, you know, you want to be as an athletic director, be present and be visible. I mean, and I be out there, be at games, not 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 just games, be it go go to prom, go to grad bash, you know, out see your athletes outside of the the aspect of athletics. Now, being at the games, um, that that's part of the job, but you know, being in the, being in the hallways during class change, being at lunch, 
you know, lunch duty, meeting the kids, talking to the kids, being with the kids, you know, getting out to parent meetings, getting out to, you know, if there's a booster club fundraiser, you, know, you might have to go. You don't have to stay the whole time, but just being being present and, and, and doing those things. Um, but like I would always say, you know, I go and I do it, too. I, you know, I, I work prom. I go. I love going to grad bash. I like roller coasters, so I'm going to go ride the roller coaster. But but riding the bus with the kids, you know, go into, you know, a homecoming dance after, you know, on a Saturday night after a home football game. Yeah, you don't want to do it, but it's good to be put yourself out there and, and, and to do those things because the kids, are, you know, that's one of those that's that building that relationship with with the kids um, and, and, and the parents because they're going to they're going to see it. They're, the kids are going to talk about it at home. Yeah, I saw Coach Vandergriff. He was riding the roller coasters at Universal during grad batch. Just having a blast, you know those those are things that that they go a long way. Um, the the last one is is, is you've got to have a balance, and that's my and that's it took me a while. It actually took me till I got married, <laughs> but I had to. You have to find a balance between being the athletic director at the school and your family, and you know one cannot supersede the other. Uh, if that does family supersedes anything. And I tell my athletic director, my assistant athletic directors that all the time. If, you know, you have to go to a school play, if you have to do this with your son or your daughter or whatever, let, let either let us know in advance, either go do it and come back, whatever you can do. We always have to have that balance because I don't want, if I was to leave this job tomorrow, somebody's going to fill it. And it's going to continue without me. It's, that's just how the, how it's going to happen. So I can pour my heart and soul into it, but if I don't have a balance with my family, then I'm going to lose someplace. So developing that balance, uh, and you know, and sometimes you know, uh, you know, beginning ads, they could just be a husband and wife with no kids. Then you have to develop a different balance if you have kids. You know, if you're not married, you know, there's there's still still need a balance there you don't need to throw you know excuse me throw yourself in into the in the mix 100 percent. but you know to not burn yourself out there has to be that balance um in in your life so those are my those are my top three that i would talk to a beginning ad about um is one being organized okay uh and then you know being present being visible being out um, not just sitting in your office behind your, you know, behind emails and, you know, and that's it. Um, like I, people get mad at me all the time because like, well, I left you a message. I said, well, I'm not in my office. I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, this conversation we have is long as I've been in my office today. So, but you know, those, those are things that come with the territory. Um, and then, you know, having that balance and, you know, and if I was to add a fourth one, it's, Find the mentor, find the networking to help yourself. Do not try and reinvent the wheel. It's already been done. Okay. Get with, get with people. Call me. I'll send you everything. They did it for me. I'm just passing it along. Russell and Jody and Roger, they did it for me. And, and Wombles reminds me of it all the time because now I'm working with him in Orange County. And, uh, but, you know, we, we get together and, you know, those are things that I always remember from those guys that helped me get to where I am and why I've been in this business for so long now. And I and I really appreciate that. And now it's my turn to pass it on. I guess I'm not the young buck anymore, I, even though I want to be the young buck still. I'm not. I'm. I, this is, you know, I think you're 13 that I've been an athletic director. So, um yeah, I can't say that. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that anymore. I didn't know I couldn't do that. So, but those those are my those are my those are my four that I would put in the '80s toolbox to help them be successful in the first couple of years. Yeah, uh, they were all great tools. Uh, we were all young bucks at one time. Uh, you know, maybe uh, not so young, but uh, still bucks. Uh, I, I love them all, but I, I always love to hear about the balance tool you know uh it's it's one that i look back on i could have should have done better i don't think i was awful but i should have done better uh and you you touched on a good point 
um, it, the balance is not just for your family, which is important. Okay. You got to be there as a parent, uh, as a, as a partner, but the balance is also important for you. Yeah. So you don't burn out. So you're not at a school where you're the sixth athletic director in six years. Uh, for you sure. know, what happened to those people in front of you? So Josh, great stuff. Thanks so much again for sharing. Uh, I know we just did it, but one more time, if one of our listeners wants to reach out, pick your brain, what's the best way they can get a hold of you? So you can email me and that's at Joshua, J-O-S-H-U-A dot Vandergrift, V-A-N-D-E-R-G-R-I-F-T at OCPS.net. Or you can text me or call me at 850-258-3061. Okay. Josh Vandergrift, Edgewater High School, uh, FIAAA board. Uh, thanks so much for sharing with us today. And all the best at um, the, the upcoming FIAAA uh, conference and for the rest of your spring sports season. Yeah, it'll be good to catch up when uh, we see you in two weeks. Hey, remember, it's either coached or allowed. Hey. It's coached <laughs> or allowed. You're right. For our listeners, um, we appreciate you tuning in today. And we upload the videos to the Education Lady Podcast YouTube channel. Thanks again for listening. Come back just about every day for new content on the Educational AD Podcast. We'll see you next time.